What up, Knicks fans? A question to start today's show. Before we get into a wild trade idea ESPN proposed earlier this week, I want to know from you, though, who would you rather be on the Knicks next year? Is it Russell Westbrook? Type zero his jersey number in the comments. Or if you want Julius Randle back with the New York Knicks, type number 30. What up, Knicks fans? Welcome into New York Knicks Now. I'm your host, Marshall Green. In today's show, we're going to break down a wild, and I mean wild, ESPN trade idea. Earlier in the week, they were talking about Julius Randle, the Knicks, and the Lakers, and this is what they thought might be a good idea to send Julius Randle out of Madison Square Garden and for Russell Westbrook to come to Madison Square Garden. Three-team deal. Zach Levine, he would go to the Los Angeles Lakers. Russell Westbrook would go to the New York Knicks along with a 2027 first-round pick and a 2028 first-round pick, while the Bulls would get Julius Randle and Evan Fournier from the New York Knicks. My first reaction is, wow, that's a lot of moving parts. I'll give you my full take and analysis throughout the rest of the video, but I want to get you guys involved early on in today's show. I love going down and reading the comments section and seeing what all the loud and proud New York Knicks fans have to say whenever we ask questions on this show. So I want to know, if you were Leon Rose or you were the general manager of, of the New York Knicks, would you make this three-team deal to get Russell Westbrook two future first-round picks and get off of the contracts of Randall and Fournier? Type A for accept, or if you don't want to do the deal, that's totally cool. You can go down and type D for decline. I'll tell you where I stand on that trade in just a quick second, but I want to remind you guys, if this is your first time coming across a New York Knicks Now video by Chat Sports, to go down and hit that big red button. Because what we do here on Knicks Now is break down trade rumors. We talk about everything under the sun when it comes to the Knickerbockers. If it bleeds blue and orange, you should be subscribed to this channel. And we're trying to get to six thousand subscribers we're 188 away i know we can get there on this video look if you love the knicks and you love watching knicks content on youtube this is the place to subscribe so go down right now and hit that big red button i've got reasons for why the knicks should accept this deal and then i have reasons i think the knicks should decline the deal and then i'll give you my my take and where i stand on it the reasons to accept you get two future first round picks yes they're not till 2027 and 2028 but you get to dr add draft capital and two first-round picks. That's a plus. You get to get you get to trade Julius Randle. We've talked about it a lot on this show. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm in the camp. You got to move on from Randle. Everything he did this past year, I think he's just worn out his welcome with the Knicks and especially Knicks fans. You get to get off of Randle and Evan Fournier's contract. Fournier still has three more years on his deal. Randall still has two more, uh, two years and a player option following the extension he signed before this season. And you get Will Russell Westbrook, who at this point is just an expiring contract. He's not a great player anymore. You get to trade two long-term contracts in Julius Randall and Evan Fournier in return for Russell Westbrook, who has only one year left for like $42.5 million, .5 million. So you pretty much are trading for to get off $42 million at the end of next season. And maybe you want Obi Toppin to start. That way you get rid of Julius Randle and Obi Toppin can be the starting power forward for the Knicks. But reasons to decline. The first round picks aren't until 2027 until 2028. That's a long ways away. Russell Westbrook is Russell Westbrook. We know what he is at this point. He's a highlight machine. He's fun to watch. He's exciting. He gets you off of your feet when you're watching the games. But he also leaves you with too many what the hell was that type of moments? He's just not a winning player anymore. And I'm not sure, honestly, if he ever was a winning player. Does what he do does on the basketball court make anyone better? Does it up the probability when he's on the court for winning games for any team? Honestly, I don't think it does, especially not at this point in his career anymore. You lose some shooting also without Evan Fournier. Fournier was one of the best shooters in the NBA last season. Set the, the franchise record the Knicks franchise record for most threes made in a season. He passed John Starks this past year. And maybe you think you can get more for Julius Randle. Maybe you don't want Russell Westbrook in a, in a, in a return trade for Julius Randle. Or maybe you just want Emmanuel quickly to be the starting point guard. Those are reasons I think you would decline the deal. I think it is a solid offer, but at the end of the day, I'm declining the deal. I get, I get all the upside of the deal. 
You get two future first-round picks. You get Russell Westbrook first contract that you get to move off of at the end of this year and save 40 plus million dollars. But I don't know as a Knicks fan if I could stomach watching Russell Westbrook for 82 games next year in the blue and orange at Madison Square Garden. His raw numbers, if you don't take in efficiency, are solid. 18.5 points per game this year, 7.5 rebounds, 7.5 assists, 43.5% from the field. But the three-point percentage numbers, not good whatsoever. And he fell off extremely fast. That's what happens when you're an athlete in the NBA that relies on your athleticism, your quickness, your burst, your strength, your ability to attack the rim falls off. Because Mother Nature is 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 a hundred percent undefeated. It's going to catch up to everybody at some point, and I think that day is here with Russell Westbrook. He is not the same player he once was at one point. And do we really want to move off of Evan Fournier already? I had some beef with Fournier about the deal that he signed this past summer, but I like what he brings to the Knicks. This is someone that stretches the floor. This is someone that can add a lot of three-pointers. This is someone that set the single franchise record for most three-pointers made in an NBA season. Evan Fournier is someone that spaces the floor. He had a lot of big games this past season. He played well against the Boston Celtics every single time we played him. He hit some big time clutch shots for the Knicks in the fourth quarter. I like what he brings to this team. Averaged 14 points per game last year, shot 41% from the field, 39% from three, and made two 141 threes for the New York Knicks this year. He adds a lot to this offensive team. He spreads the floor for guys like R.J. Barrett, for Emmanuel Quickly. And if you keep Julius Randle, Evan Fournier is going to sp uh, spread and stretch the floor for him. I love Julius Randle. What he did for the Knicks in 2020, I can't put any words on it. He made us respectable. He got us into the playoffs. But then everything fell off hill. Last year, one of the best players in the NBA, Finished top 10 in MVP votes. Averaged 24, 10 rebounds, 6 assists. Shot 45.5% from the field. Almost 42% from 3. 41.1 to be exact. The same number he shot from the field this year. His raw numbers this year, 20, 10, and 5. Those are solid. But when you shoot 41% from the field and 31% from three. Those aren't efficient numbers, and I understand that some people just look at points, rebounds, and assists, but at the end of the day, if you're not an efficient player, you're not a winning player, and I'm not sure at this point in his career, Julius Randle has showed that he can be a winning basketball player. But I want to know from you. Tell me in the comments section. Spam it. I'll be down there reading and interacting with you guys. I'll make sure to reply to a lot of comments. Do you want, the, do you want Julius Randle on the Knicks next year, do you want to see him again in Madison Square Garden, in the blue and orange, wearing number three? I want to hear from you. Type Y for yes, or you can go down and type N for no. Whether the Knicks trade Randall or they keep him, his value across the league is at an all-time low. There's no doubt about that. You're not going to be able to get the type of haul or return in the Julius Randall trade that you would have got at the NBA trade deadline, or even before last season when he was the NBA's most improved player, where he was uh, all, all NBA second team type of guy. I like Randall a lot. He brings a lot to the Knicks, but he also, in my opinion, sometimes does bad, more bad for the Knicks than he does good. The attitude is terrible. He is lackluster on the defensive end. It seems like he only really brings 110% effort on national televised games, on ESPN, on TNT. I like Julius Randle a lot, but he pushed me away this past season, and especially what he did in the playoffs last year against the Atlanta Hawks, where he played like an absolute stiff. Averaged 18 points. That's good. But he also averaged 4.6 turnovers per game and shot 29.8% from the field. It still pisses me off when I see, when I see that because the Knicks, they easily could have beat the Hawks last year in the first round if Julius Randle played even of a, of a fraction up to the type of player he is. When you shoot 29.8% from the field, you're not going to win any games when you lead the team in shot attempts. He shot 33% from the field, but that's way down from the 41.1 he shot in the regular season last year. Randle this past year, 20 points, 9.9 .9 rebounds, 5.1 assists, 41.1% from the field. He has to be better this year than he was last year if the Knicks want to even improve their stock at all because the Knicks, they gave him a massive payday. They gave him that contract extension that's paying him 
$5.7 million for the 2022 and 2023 season. And that price, it is all, it's only going to go up. Then it's 25 and a half. Then it's 27 and a half. And then in 2025 and 2026, he's going to be making $30 million, which he has a player option for, which he's going to opt into because he may never get that type of money ever again. And then this list. It's been on the show a couple of times. But there were so many times this season where we watched Julius Randle and we just wanted to pull our hair out as Knicks fans. He got into a fight with Rudy Gobert. He got into a fight with Cam Johnson, and then Cam Johnson hit a game winner just minutes later. The thumbs down incident when he pretty much told Knicks fans to F off. He had a career high 12 technical fouls. He was texting in post game press conferences. It just seemed like Julius Randle didn't give a shit about the Knicks, didn't care about the fans, didn't care about the team, didn't care about winning. He slapped the laptop out of a freaking assistant coach's hand on the sideline. $163,000 in fines. He wasn't speaking to the media. The Knicks were paying those fines. He didn't participate in lineup announcements on the road, and he was dressing by himself in the locker room, away from his teammates. He didn't want to be a part of the team. It, you could just tell. I mean, at the end of the season, he sat out because of a quad injury where I don't even, I mean, I don't like to say this, but I don't actually even think he was really that hurt. I think the thing inside his chest that beats all day, I think his heart was a little bit hurt. But do you think the Knicks will actually trade Julius Randle this season? I sure hope they do, man. I can't go through another season of watching him play for the New York Knicks. But let me know, do you think they're going to trade him? Type T for trade or type K for keep. I appreciate everybody that's made New York Knicks now a part of their day today. Show me some love over on Twitter at Marshall Green underscore. Everybody that follows me from this video, I'll make sure to follow you back. Just send me a DM letting me you know you came from the wild ESPN trade idea video. 